Okay, today's lesson is 1.6 in your big book. We are on page 27. Today we're going to learn about adding and subtracting decimals. Our essential question, how do you add and subtract multi-digit decimals? So um, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to do that. Connect. The place value of a digit in a number shows the value of the digit. The number 2 and 358 thousandths shows two ones, three tenths, five hundredths, notice the th's at the end, and eight thousandths. So two ones, three tenths, five hundred five hundredths, eight thousandths. Just a quick little review on our place value. Here we go. Amanda and three of her friends volunteer at the local animal shelter. One of their jobs is to weigh the puppies and kittens and chart their growth. Amanda's favorite puppy weighed two and 358 thousandths of a pound last month. If it gained one and eight hundredths pound, how much does it weigh this month? So we're going to add these two multi-digit decimals together. First, we're going to estimate, though. We're going to look at the number. We're going to round to the nearest whole number. These out here are our whole numbers, the ones uh, to the left of the decimal out in front. And in order to determine what the whole number is, we look at the digit behind. Remember our rounding. So look at this digit, 3. Does 3 round the 2 up, or does it leave it alone? Well, in this case, uh, the 3 is smaller than 5, and therefore it does not round up. So we leave that 2 alone. So the, the nearest whole number for this multi-digit decimal is 2, because 3 does not round up the 2. Once again, we're going to look at the digit behind the 1 and determine whether or not it's going to round up that number. 0 is not going to round it up. Remember, if it's going to round up, it has to be 5 or more. So the nearest whole number is 1. So therefore, 2 plus 1 is 3. So our estimate is 3. So our final answer should be near 3. Add the thousandths first. So when you're actually adding the multi-digit decimals, line them up so that the decimals are on top of each other. Okay? Since the second uh, number does not go out, does not extend to the thousandths place, we're going to put a placeholder zero right here so that we can line up all of our digits um, carefully and accurately. 8 plus 0 mm -hmm. is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. But we're going to have to regroup that 1, carry it over to the tenths place. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 0 is still 4. Bring down that decimal, it comes straight down. 2 plus 1 is 3. So, since 3, our estimate, is close to 3 and, when you um, have a decimal, the word and in math represents the decimal. So we would say 3 and 438 thousandths. The answer is reasonable. So the puppy weighs... 3 and 438 thousandths. Okay, so looking for structure. Is it necessary to add a zero after the uh, 1 and 8 hundredths to find the sum? No, it's not necessary, but it does help us stay organized. So I'm going to say no, but it helps us um, line up place 
value digits. Basically, it keeps us organized if we do that, if we add this zero out here. Okay, um, explain how place value can help you add decimals. Um, it helps you keep the numbers in order, basically. Helps you keep the numbers in order. In other words, then you're adding like values to each other. So if they're both in the thousandths place, then they can be added together. If they're in the hundredths place, then they can be added together. We don't add hundredths and thousandths to each other. We don't cross, um, cross add place values. We keep them in order. All right, let's move on. Here we go, the next example. A bee hummingbird, the world's smallest bird, has a mass of one and 836 thousandths grams. A new United States nickel has a mass of five grams. So that's quite a bit bigger, more than twice as big. What is the difference in grams between the mass of a nickel and the mass of a bee hummingbird? So in order to find the difference, first we're gonna to estimate to make sure that our final mm -hmm. answer is reasonable. So five is already a whole number. I don't have to do anything to that one. So I'm just gonna write five there. This, we're, we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. Remember, the number in front of the decimal is the whole number. So we're gonna look at this eight. Does the eight affect that one when rounding? Well, remember if it's five or more, then we go ahead and round mm -hmm. up. So eight is greater than five. Therefore, we will round this up to two. So five take away two mm -hmm. is three. So, um, oh, they said think, they're, they're help giving us a little hint. So five is the same as five and, um, and zero thousandths. All right, so we're gonna add some zeros mm -hmm. out here when we're actually subtracting in order to keep ourselves um, organized. All right, so we're gonna subtract the thousands first. So you always start from the right and work your way left. So then subtract the hundredths, tenths, and ones. Regroup as needed. So we're gonna start here, subtracting across zeros. We might need a little refresher on that. So we go over here and we can't borrow from the tenths place and we can't regroup from the or I mean the hundredths place or the tenths place. So we're gonna to have to come all the way out here to, to um, borrow for our regrouping. And we make that a four, then this becomes a 10. Then we uh, have to borrow for over here. So we're gonna change that to a nine, which makes this a 10. But we still have to shift over to the thousandths place. So we're gonna borrow again and make this one a 10. All right, so 10 take away six is four. Nine take away three is six. Nine take away eight is one. Four take away one is three. Bring that decimal straight down. So we have three and 164 thousandths. Is that pretty close to our estimate at the beginning? Yes, it is, because it's pretty close to three. So our answer is reasonable, so we're going to assume it's correct. Compare your estimate with the difference, which we just did. Since the estimate three is close to the three and 164 thousandths, the answer is reasonable. So the mass of a new nickel is three and 164 thousandths grams more than the mass of a bee hummingbird. That is a pretty mm -hmm. small bird if it's that much smaller than a nickel. Its mass is that much smaller. All right, example two, evaluate. 
Okay, so here we have to use recall our order of operations mm -hmm. because there's three different, um, there's two operations going on with three different numbers. So according to op order of operations, we do parentheses first. So we're going to do the operation in the parentheses first. Once again, we're going to line up our decimal. That's critical. They added a zero to the end um, so that, so that uh, all of our digits are out to the thousands place. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to need to regroup. So we have 10 take away 7 is 3. We have 4 take away 9, can't be done. We're going to regroup again and make this a 14. 14 take away 9 is 5. 5 take away 1 is 4. Mm -hmm. So this operation right here in the parentheses, this is 4 and 53 hundredths. All right, so let's rewrite the problem now. Four and 53 hundredths, let's make that decimal clear, plus three and 461 thousandths um, is what we're going to do next. So we're gonna line up our decimals, make sure that our digits are correctly aligned according to their place value. And we have five, three, but look at this, I've got an empty space over this one, so I'm gonna put a zero there, a little placeholder zero. Okay, so zero plus one is one, three plus six is nine, five plus four is nine, bring down the decimal, four plus three is seven. So the value of the expression is seven and 991 thousandths, which is very close to eight. All right, let's take a look at share and show. Find three and 42 hundredths minus one and nine tenths. So first we're gonna estimate. Let's look at this. We wanna round it to the nearest whole number Look at the four, does that affect the three? Well, remember it's five or more that rounds it up. So it this four does not round up the three. So we're gonna start with a three. Okay, once again, look at the whole number, look at the digit behind it. The nine is greater than five and therefore does round up that one. So uh, one rounded up one digit is two. So three take away two is one. So our estimate is one. All right, here um, we're going to, let's see, subtract the thousandths. First, uh, notice once again, they added a zero because one and nine tenths is exactly the same as one and 90 hundredths. There's no difference in that value. Okay, so we have two take away zero is two. Four take away nine cannot be done. So we're gonna regroup this and make it 14. 14 take away nine is five. Bring down the placeholder, or bring down the decimal, sorry. Two take away one is one. So our final answer is one and 52 hundredths. Is that pretty close to one? Yes, it is. So our answer is reasonable. All right, estimate, then find the sum or dis difference. So first we're gonna estimate. We have two and three tenths. Looking at that, that's not a five, so it's not rounding up. So this is basically two five and 68 hundredths, the six is greater than five, and therefore it does round up this five to a six, and we're adding, plus uh, 21 and 47 thousandths, 
The zero does not impact that one, therefore this stays 21. All right, so we have two plus six plus 21. So this is basically eight plus 21. So our estimate is 29. All right, now let's do the actual lining up of the digits. Um, okay, so let's go 2.3, 5.3, 8. They don't give us a whole lot of room to work here, so we're going to have to spread out a little bit. Now this 1 from the 21 is in the 1's place and therefore should be lined up with the 2 and the 5. So the 2 comes out here because it's in the 10's place. And then we have 0, 4, 7. Now this only has digits out to the tenths place. This one has digits out to the thousandths place. So we're going to go ahead and add some placeholder zeros out here to keep us organized. So 2 and 300 thousandths is exactly the same amount as 2 and 3 tenths. Okay, 0 plus 0 plus 7 gives us 7. Oh, we're adding. 0 plus 8 plus 4 is 12. We're going to regroup that 1 into the tenths place. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 6 more is 10. Regroup the 1 to the 1's place. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 5 is 8, plus 1 more is 9. I don't have to regroup this time. Okay, so I end up with 29 and 27 thousandths. Is that pretty close to our estimate? Yes, it is. Therefore, our answer is reasonable. Okay, you can go ahead and do the rest. I'm going to show you your notes now. Okay, lesson 1.6, add and subtract decimals. So our notes, in our notes, we line up the place value digits starting with the decimal. Always line up starting with the decimal. And if you need to, go ahead and use um, graph paper to help you line things up. Do you see how nice and easy it is to see exactly where everything needs to be lined up? Graph paper really helps with that. So if you have graph paper handy, use it. If you don't, ask your teacher and they'll get you some. Okay, so when we have two and 358 thousandths and 10 and 8 tenths, we would line it up like this. But you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do the estimate. So let's do our estimate first. Let's look at that three. Uh, does the three affect the two? No, it does not. So I have two plus, what about that eight? Does the eight affect the zero? Yes, it does. It's going to bump that up to a one because it's greater than Five. So we have 2 plus 11, so our estimate is 13. Let's see what our final answer is. 13 and 158 thousandths. Notice that I use those placeholder zeros. Again, there's our subtraction um, example. And our notes down here. All right, so look for the PDF in the Google Classroom.